HMS Queen Mary was a half-sister to the Lion-class battlecruisers. Where Lion and Princess Royal were contemporaneous with and shared some features of the Orion-class super dreadnoughts, and Tiger after her would have a similar relationship to the Iron Dukes, Queen Mary was the battlecruiser companion to the King George V class. Her name was no accident or random happenstance, as tradition in the Royal Navy at the time was to name the first class of capital ships built in a new monarch's reign after them, hence the King George V's. And the new Queen was named Mary, so the companion of the King George V battleship class would be named Queen Mary. As the King George V's represented an incremental improvement over the Orions, so the Queen Mary represented an incremental improvement over the Lions. At around 27,000 tonnes displacement, she was longer, wider, and heavier than her predecessors, in addition to which some additional armour was provided for the secondary battery and the overall layout of the armour was slightly readjusted. The main battery was also equipped with a new 1400 pound shell, which was considerably heavier than the 1250 pound shell used in the Lions, and this came with a new turret mounting in order to cope with the new shells. All of this required an extra 5,000 shaft horsepower in order to maintain the ship's speed, the other main change being making sure that the superstructure order was back to being bridge, then mast, then funnel, instead of bridge, then funnel, and then mast, um, which had occurred on the Lions with predictable results and emergency changes made to their layout. She also reverted accommodation back to to officers' quarters being positioned aft with the men amidships and forward, the reverse having been tried in early dreadnoughts and battlecruisers but not really proving to work out all that well. These changes gave us a ship armed with 13.5 inch guns for its main battery and four twin turrets, a pair super firing forward, an amidships Q turret and an aft X turret, along with 16 single casement mounted 4 inch guns, also on brand new mountings, which were positioned one deck above the main deck and thus not in the hull, which made them considerably more workable in rough seas than the hull mounted guns found in most battleships of the time. And these were all on a single level, as opposed to on the Lions, which had had a couple of mountings a deck higher still. A pair of underwater torpedo tubes, one per side, completed the designed weaponry, although a couple of anti-aircraft guns would be added soon after she entered service. A design total of 75,000 shaft horsepower was supposed to send her up to 28 knots, which she just about managed on her four screws, albeit while generating a fair bit more than her designed power. As with all pre-war British battlecruisers, she ran on a mixture of coal and oil, with coal bunkers in theory adding somewhat to her protection as long as they were full. Also somewhat unique to the ship was her fire control system. Most systems on Royal Navy capital ships at this point were the so-called Dreyer tables, but for comparison purposes Queen Mary was fitted with a set from Arthur Pollen instead, the so-called Argo clock, with its accompanying rangefinder. She was laid down in March 1911, launched almost exactly a year later in March 1912, and commissioned into the fleet in August 1913, becoming the last British battlecruiser to enter service with the fleet prior to World War I. Queen Mary would then find herself involved in almost every major battlecruiser action of World War I in the North Sea. First at the Battle of Heligoland Bight, soon after the start of the war, then the pursuit of the German first scouting group after the initial bombardments of the English coast, she would miss the Battle of Dogger Bank due to being in dock at the time, and so the next, and as it turned out, last action she would fight would be the Battle of Jutland. In this particular action she would be third in the line of battle as part of the battlecruiser fleet, behind Lion and Princess Royal but ahead of Tiger, Indefatigable and New Zealand. Despite Beatty's handling of the situation, she was actually doing relatively well, firing rapid and precise salvos and landing a number of damaging hits on SMS Sadlets before Sadlets managed to land a couple of shots in return, although with relatively little apparent effect. Unfortunately, up ahead Lion had taken repeated hits and veered out of line, which caused SMS Dare Flinger to switch fire to Queen Mary. Firing under almost practice conditions, the Iron Dog began to track in with her 12-inch guns, and in rapid succession a hit from one of the two German battlecruisers 
crippled Q turret, and then a few minutes later another series of hits set off a chain reaction that would eventually see the forward magazines detonate with an apocalyptic explosion that showered the following Tiger with debris. Out of over 1,200 men, fewer than two dozen would survive, mostly picked up by following British destroyers, although the Germans would also find a couple. The wreck would be found and surveyed decades later, and found to be in three pieces, indicating that at some point one of the aft magazines also went off, possibly as a sympathetic detonation after the loss of the forward magazines. The site remains a protected war grave in the North Sea. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.